Welcome everybody. This is episode three of the Chili Line Media Podcast. Um, this is our second episode with a special guest, Natalie Benali, a close friend of mine. Uh, the first project I ever worked on was directly with Natalie. Um, and uh, yeah, she's a professional dancer, multiple um, disciplines, uh, an actress, writer, director, um, teacher, you know, all encompassing. <laughs> Um, she's an awesome individual and we're happy to have her on here today. So here's Natalie. Yeah, thank you, Natalie. Thank you. I always get so like, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, That's all me? I know. I'm like, and then other parts of me, I'm like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's me. Um, so yeah, if you could start off telling us like where you were before you got into the film industry, how you got into the film industry and what you're doing now, mm-hmm. that would be... So what got going on? Yeah. So first, I'm gonna introduce myself first, in, in the whole Navajo way. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, Natalie So I'm Natalie. I am born for the Great Duke People Clan, born for the Red Running to Water Clan. My maternal grandparents' clan is the Zuni Pueblo People Clan. And my paternal grandparents' clan is the Water Edge People clan. Um, yeah, so originally born and raised out near Gallup, New Mexico. G Town. Um, G Town. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out G Town. Um, yeah, so I, you know, was born and raised there. Um, I grew up there, and then left when I was like 17, when I first went to college, and did the whole college route, um, and then just started uh, professionally working in dance. Um, Tried to do film much earlier on when I was like 20, 21, um, but the industry was very different back then. Mm-hmm. Um, might not seem like that long ago, but yeah, 10, 15 years ago, it was still very much a different thing um, in terms of like diversity and inclusion at the time. So I just wasn't really finding like a place and I didn't really fit into the whole mold at the time. So that's where dance kind of came into play. So I spent a lot of years in dance, um, spent about like 12, 13 years professionally dancing, touring, um, teaching workshops, working with youth, um, and did a lot of community work um, and cultural advocate work as well. Um, and so I actually got back into film around 2021. Um, I was reached out to uh, by a indie production that was going to be filming out in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, it was a little film called Five Red Face and Me. Yes. Um, being written and directed by Billy Luther. And so they were looking for someone who was Navajo who could be helpful in their production department, specifically when it came to the sets and what the the world of the story in the film needed to feel and look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, the team had reached out to me because they were recommended to me, um, as a sort of like, Hey, like we really want someone who's Navajo who can like build and design this set with our designer and make sure that it's actually like authentic and real and true to the story of like the Navajo people and Navajo lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, it was in the middle of summer and I was working a full-time job at the, at the time. And so I was like, you know, like I'd always wanted to get back into that line of work for a while. So I just decided to quit my job halfway through and jumped right into it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah literally <laughs> jumped right in. It's scary because like I, n- I had never done production design um, and I ended up becoming the art director. So I basically worked very closely with the production designer. Shout out, Robot. Shout out, Robot. Um, and we basically, you know, made sure that everything that was involved in the set, the props, just everything that we dressed um, was true to what it was growing up on the Navajo Res at yeah. that time. And it took place in the 90s, too. So there had to be like a, a very like um, detailed balance between like a time that like is modern, but also like there's just like these little quirky things that you find that are like kind of out of place mm-hmm. um, and sort of like from an older time. So I think... Um, you know, even though I didn't have much experience doing that work beforehand, you know, I'm Navajo and I know that lifestyle. So I just was like, okay, I read the script and I was like, I can do this. Yeah. I can make this happen. I can make sure that it actually is like the real thing. Yeah, for <laughs> so, sure. Um, and so, yeah, so that's where, you know, I met you yep. and hired you and I was like, cool, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was we ran around. Yeah, yeah, we had like a really great team of like people who just like, you know, I, you know, I had to trust them and they had to trust me to make sure that everything we created and brought in, you know, was was right and it felt right. And, you know, now it's on Netflix and it people have responded so positively yeah, very to well, it. Very well. And I'm just like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, that was that was when it premiered at South by Southwest last year. One of the things that during the panels, because I was there, one of the main responses, positive responses to it, was the art direction mm. and how you know people felt that it was you know perfect for what they've experienced and what they know, and, and that they had never seen films like that before. Yeah, you know. So that and was, I think the thing about that too is that you know I feel like there's there's still a tendency for like. Um, sort of like this this notion that all tribes sort of operate the same way mm -hmm. or they all have the same look and the same aesthetic. That's not true. Like, you know, there are like so many different tribes and tribal nations across, you know, here, um, what's known as the United States and Canada and even in like South America, you know, like we're all different and we all like have similar things that are sort of like threaded through our communities, but there's also um, specific things that need to be tailored to that particular sure. community and I think yeah. that's what I was very adamant about was like you know I didn't want to have another pan-indigenous approach to it mm -hmm. I was like this is a Navajo community it's a Navajo homestead it has to have these certain things because this is what it would this is what it would look like and this sure. is what we used right like yeah. even down to the water buckets yeah know? yeah <laughs> or like the bent fork yeah, yeah the little <laughs> bent fork yeah, yeah like every single thing mattered and so yeah I was really happy that a lot of people were like yeah no it actually was like what it was like growing back home in that in that area and you know and it was crazy too because like most of that stuff was sourced from my house and billy's house yeah, you know? yeah <laughs> I, I remember it was like my mom still gives me shit about not being able to bring her lantern back i was oh, like i'm so no. sorry did you lose the lantern i don't i think so because we had you know we had like what 10 of those lanterns yeah so i think i just kind of like thought that i had grabbed the one that was my mom's but apparently it wasn't mm -hmm. and so she still is like I didn't get my lantern back. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was where we met. And that was, you know, where we kind of bonded and became friends. Um, it was a blast. It was my first learning opportunity. And mm -hmm. you and I were kind of, were green in that sense. So doing it together was like so much fun, but then also like kind of super stressful, but like it was, it was such a fun time, you know? And, yeah. Oh yeah. We had, so we had a blast. Like it was, again, it was stressful. I mean, I think the, the whole elements aspect to it too. Yeah. It was like during monsoon season. It was, right. that's right. There was a flood that came through, storm came through one day. I missed that day because I You did, because you miss were that leaving. Day. Yeah, you had to move. Wasn't yeah, it? I had to move that day. Um, so I missed that day on set, but I heard the next day, you know, we came out to pick up all the stuff and there was like prop items and set items that were like a hundred yards down yeah, the way. Like yeah, like there was like a flood and we were just yeah. like, there goes our trash can. Like there goes all these prop pieces that we put yeah, places. Yeah, these carefully curated <laughs> prop pieces. I know. And oh my God, maintaining continuity on that set was so hard. It was tough. It was, it was really rough because I was like, oh my God, there's like, again, because it's like, it had to be lived in and mm -hmm. it had to have a, a sense of like, you know, people have been living here for a long time, right? So it was also just kind of like, it was very functional too. Yeah. So people were always like moving stuff, stuff and using things. And I was like, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop. <laughs> like, I know you want to sit in that chair, but please stop. <laughs> it was, uh, it was out in the space. What was it the girls ranch? Yeah. Yeah. And it was out between Lamy, between Lamy and Santa Fe, kind of in that area. And when we first got there, it was just like this barren plot of land. Yeah. yeah. And they brought in a mobile trailer. They brought in. Um, we, there was a Hogan built, fences built, like it was completely the built. The corral was built. Yeah. was built from scratch. And so once it was all established, it kind of felt like a very, um, like you were saying, everybody was just kind of messing with stuff and then move things. The drive was crazy <laughs> to the track it down. Um, and then we had to put all of our props in that back room mm -hmm. that was also used as like cameras nice. sometimes in there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, but you know, it was, it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Uh, we had a lot of laughs for sure. Yeah. So yeah, so that was basically the thing that like pulled me back into the world of film and just, you know, jumped in full on after that. Like, um, was very fortunate to also like have had acting come back into my life. For sure. Which was really weird because like, you know, I left my dreams of being an actor, you know, back when I was like 20, 21, because I was just like, there's no, like I, I, I got told a lot by people in the industry. I quote this that I looked too modern to play a native person mm. on screen. Because a lot of times, you know, like when you think of the content that was being made with native people at the time, it was all like historical films, right? Sure. Or like period films. And so like, they always wanted that like stereotypical historic feature like type actors to play these roles. And so I don't have that. Like I very much am like, 
I'm a contemporary native person, y'all. Like, yeah. I look like a contemporary native <laughs> person. We're still alive, it's 2020. by the way. Yeah. We're, still, we're still here. Um, and so, you know, after like being told that constantly, and then, oh, and then I also was told that I should try to audition for more Asian roles because I looked more Asian. Interesting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was that like, wild. how did that make you feel? <laughs> So many things, Miko. Um, or my, sorry, I keep calling you my yeah, name okay. too. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I felt so many things, um, but I think it was very interesting to be asked to play someone that I had no like background and understanding their experience. You know, I think that was like something that I was just like, I don't feel comfortable because like I don't know the Asian experience because I'm not from that community. Like I don't, yeah. I don't want to like portray something that might not feel right or feel real, you know? And um, so, yeah, so that was like sort of like why I stepped away from that, you know, that idea of being an actor for a really long time because I just didn't feel like I fit. And then, you know, now that this is like a renaissance of like so many like new, like people coming into the industry or people are, are voicing more that there has to be a little bit more authenticity in the way that these projects are being, you know, created down to the casting, to the people who are writing and directing. Um, so I think it's been really, you know, f I've been very fortunate that like that sort of line of work came back in. Yeah. And so I started doing more acting. Um, and so that's been really fun. You kind of uh, accelerated pretty quickly, like uh, going, yeah, yeah. You did, <laughs> legitimately. Um, Which is weird. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, now you all like me. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? I was right. like, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been really fun too to sort of like um, see that shift as well. Um, and so, but now I'm, I'm definitely moving more into uh, writing mm -hmm. and directing. I've directed a few of my own shorts and have written a few things. And um, yeah, so I feel like I'm just sort of like dipping my toes into everything. But mm -hmm. I feel like first and foremost, like my passion right now is to really be in the in the writer chair and For like sure. really write the stories that I want to see because, you know, there's there's so much out there uh -huh. and so much that can be shared, For you sure. know, and um, I'm also kind of like a, a rebel in a sense because, like, I want to write things that are just so, like, not <laughs> what people would expect, you yeah. know? Yeah, <laughs> well, things that haven't been made before or... Yeah, I just, like, because I think the one thing that, like, in the last year or so, I, I've been really just trying to, like, learn what my voice is mm -hmm. and, like, where I want to, like, what, what kind of stories do I want to tell? Um, and so I've, I've definitely drawn from a lot of like, you know, I think I, I had a period in time as a writer and as a creative where I focused a lot on like pain and trauma, mm -hmm. cause that's yeah. like what art is, right? Like yeah. we, we utilize a lot of that to overcome and to heal from a lot of the things that we've gone through that are tough. Right. And so I feel like I had a period in time where like that was where I was, but now it's kind of like I'm shifting and mm -hmm. I'm evolving into more stories that are like just ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, you know, ridiculous. Perky, <laughs> very like, you know, very just out of just out of control. Like because I think the thing that I used to get frustrated about, especially like as an actor too, when I am asked to read for roles and I always see the same thing for especially for like native female roles. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the same type of person or the the same type of vibe that people yeah. like always want okay. you to read they're like she's strong she's resilient she's like tough but like has a da 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 and i'm like that's great but like there's more to that there's mm, i mean <laughs> I, I i i get that but like also like i want to see like just like native women be empowered in who they are in a in a more like messy way yeah. you know like yeah. to show that we're also very human like we mess up we make mistakes we like get ourselves into ridiculous situations, you know, like, and also just like, I was just so sick and tired of seeing like, you know, black and brown bodies being seen in pain and being used for trauma all the freaking time. Yeah. So I was like, was... I really wanted to write characters that were more like in depth with like, um, in their, in their flaws, but also like, yeah, just, just being people. Have yeah, a, yeah right. just let them have a good time. I mean, that's what my, you know, the full length com comedy, um, that I wrote in the last like two years, um, really is like in that, in that lane because I just was like I'm so tired of like the same old just the same old like I I want to see someone who's just like chaotic <laughs> and like just <laughs> all around a mess you yeah, know yeah, like they're great. trying to figure themselves out right because I feel like most most times you know that's why comedy is so powerful you mm -hmm. know it's like it takes these really tough things and 
you can laugh about it and yet be like, wow. Yeah, we can, like, form, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, or, no, go ahead. Uh, I, I kind of lost what I was going to say. <laughs> just, just point it. I was like, she was like, like uh, bring it back, bring it back. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I was just going to say, like, it was one of the fun parts about comedy is that, you know, you can have these shared experiences that we can all laugh about. Mm -hmm. And it creates these mutual understandings, you know, with each other that you wouldn't get in other genres of film. Whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, more dramatic, serious stuff, whether it's, like, thriller, action. Like, that's why comedy is so fun. Like, I think that's why we started doing comedy. Yeah, totally. You know, it's just because it's also, it's harder, you know, because everybody finds what's funny, like, differently. Everybody has their mm -hmm. own taste and humor. But... It's also a way to learn how to express yourself yeah. and to kind of find your avenue in a way that you wouldn't if you wrote something super serious and like hardcore to begin with. Yeah. I don't know. That's just my two cents. Yeah. And it's, I feel like it's a good way to kind of express yourself through your writing. Cause like, you know, you want to make sure everybody thinks what you're writing is funny, sure. but also it's like about what you think is funny and what you like. And like, I don't know. That's kind yeah. of how I felt about some of the stuff we've done. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And just like going back to what we were saying earlier, you know, I think there's, there's also a really fun, like opportunity to just write funny like comedic material that has no limits mm -hmm. you know yeah. because there's really like no no too much or too little of anything when it comes to comedy I think because it's just like it, it all like is very much still a, what we have in life like yeah. certain life situations might not be as funny when you're like in them but in then em? when you like write them, you're like oh my god <laughs> that was like, nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the whole purpose of like you know squash blossoms was like a really like crazy thing happened and i was like freaking out about it in the moment and then like later was like that actually is really funny that's really funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cool. and comedy ages well too you know it's 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 one of those things that like can change over time in a way that I don't think other genres can, mm. you know? Mm. Um, so yeah. Um, what, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about like what you've done with your short film series? And then of course, you know, the documentary that we worked on together. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a time and space now where I'm like, wait, we did that. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I curate a film series called a Jish, which is, um, a series of dance films, dance shorts that I create with um, native dancers from different backgrounds. And mm -hmm. Not just tribal backgrounds, but just like dance backgrounds as well. Um, so the whole point of that series was I really wanted to um, have, a, I guess like a, a portfolio of just how many different like native people have different ways of moving and different mm -hmm. stories they share. And so, um, and because I'm a dancer, I just love dance and I love, I love to direct dance on camera yeah. so much like it's just like yes um so i had been like doing this just like over the course of like you know my career and then now like being able to be a little bit more established and knowing what it takes to do those on a much bigger level like um i like envision myself like hopefully one day being able to like creative direct a big show or a live production where i can like choreograph and also like direct camera wow, for yeah. performance yeah. like that's where i want to head because yeah, <laughs> that's just what i love um and so, and then the documentary, uh, Indigenize the Plate, which is the first full length documentary that we um, worked on. It's like, like, what, the second? No, we've done a lot of work together. We've done, a, we've yeah, done yeah, yeah, yeah. four or five projects <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah, but that was definitely the biggest one so far. Um, so that was a documentary that um, is currently airing on PBS right now nationwide. Sweet. So, Ooh. yay! Ooh. Um, but yeah, so that's a, a nonfiction um documentary that we did about food sustainability and how that ties into cultural sustainability. And it's, a, it's my journey of like really sort of looking back on my life, like growing up on the res, learning all these like, you know, techniques and skills relation in, in relation to like my cultural teaching and my cultural knowledge. And like, you know, having this like interesting journey of like having all this knowledge, but yet like, I'm also like a contemporary native person too, living in this very modern world with like technology and like striving to go to college and get yeah. degrees and do all this stuff, get yeah. a job, own a house, all this, all these things. Right. And really just like going on this journey of like re establishing myself back within my, my home and also connecting with the Quechua um, community down in Peru mm -hmm. where we filmed for half of the doc yeah. and learning about how they're kind of tackling the, the eco, um, I guess climate changes that are happening there in their environment and how they're kind of like doing 
an approach that like I hadn't seen in uh-huh. that way before. Mm. Um, so that was really fun. And yeah, also just the food. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I freaking love food. Yeah. I've always wanted to do a food like centered thing and so I could eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really good food too. Because you had um, the, uh, what was his name? The chef from Boston. Oh, Jose Duarte. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. he was the chef that I like featured in the doc and was the, the connector between me and this uh, community in uh, Peru uh-huh. um, because of the Santa, uh, Santa Cruz Eco Lodge that he established there. And it's actually now fully run by the community, um, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, I feel like, the biggest like tackle of a project that I've done so far. And um, yeah, I think this year is more about writing and mm. be more in development rather than like filming Production. and doing because we filmed all last year. Yeah. It's exhausting. It is it's, exhausting. It's exhausting, people. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like it's, yeah. It might seem like fun and all this glitz and glam of like, oh, this is great, but it's so much work. Is is There's a lot that goes into it. So I think like a whole year of filming and putting together projects was tiring. Was exhausting. And yeah. Like, and we're good. We I want to write and I want to focus and on develop. something else. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure just filming, you get you, all these ideas are in your head too. Like just doing that for a whole year, mm-hmm. that, that you kind of want to translate into your own stuff. And yeah, like it. yeah. I think it's also like, um, again, I think it works a different part of the like your your mm. energy. Um, so I feel like I think I think also it's like I'm trying not to get sucked into this like idea that in order to be productive or feel productive I need to like wear myself out Mm -hmm. so I think after that whole year of just like non-stop 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 creating filming scheduling all this stuff I was like no like I feel like that was good enough yeah and I really just need to figure out how to like not fall into that like grind mentality because I talk about this in the doc too um of like how I really am trying to like not just you know see work in my life passion as like something I have to give everything for. It's like I can give myself here and then there, but I, I just don't want to fall into that hustle mindset anymore because mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's a very like societal conditioning thing that we have that we have to like grind go, and push go, go, and go, 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 yeah. go. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm good. I mean, it, it's a balance. I was like, know? yeah, it, it is, is a balance. Yeah. Balance. So yeah, I think that's why like this year we were like, let's, let's, let's roll it back. Yeah. Let's breathe a little bit. And then also, I mean, writing in itself is exhausting. You know, it's a different kind of thing. <laughs> you know, it requires a different kind of focus that's really hard to, you know, at least for me, like when I'm writing, I have to have like no distractions. Mm. I have to be in the right headspace. I can't be tired. So like, you know, I write in the morning because that's when I'm ready to go. And so it requires a different set of, you know, discipline and focus and exhaustion as well. Oh, yeah. You know? I avoided it for so long. Yeah, it's like, hard. I, I never <laughs> considered myself to be a writer because like... I mean, cause I'm such a mover, right? Like I, I like the physical embodiment of storytelling mm-hmm. so much, you know, that's why I've done it for so many years as a dancer and as a, a choreographer. Um, and it wasn't until when I tore my Achilles in November, 2021, and I couldn't move anymore in that way. Um, and like, I was going crazy cause I was like, oh my God, like the one thing that I use to like literally mm. creatively get out things to express myself is now like. I, I can't do it for a while because I have to heal. I have to recover. And it wasn't until that happened that, you know, I was like, well, so what I love about like being creative is that there are so many different metamorphoses you go through as a creative person, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, by choice or not. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so that, that gave me the opportunity to like really be like, okay, well, I can't do anything with dance right now per se because I can't like, I can't walk. I can't drive. I can't even like you know, do anything like that. And so I was just like, all right, well, I got my laptop. Maybe I can learn how to dance with words instead. So yeah. that's where I really yeah, cool. started hashing out, you know, the ideas for like different, um, different stories, different like, you know, okay, like do I want to write a short film or do I want to write a feature film? And so I think that really was like the thing that made like, like no, sit here and write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that's what you have to do, you know, writers write. You yeah. Know, and, and it's, <laughs> I mean, that's what we're kind of dealing with, too, is learning how yeah. to do that as young filmmakers. And figuring mm-hmm. out, like, the process that works for you. Like you said, you like the morning. Yeah. For me, it's just random. Out of nowhere, I'll just be like, oh, I want to write right now. And it's like, <laughs> you just got to stop <laughs> that. Exactly start writing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's also, like, I had to learn how to force it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, because if I, like, try to, like, I, I've tried to do this, too. It's like I tried to, like, write, like set out a schedule. of like, okay, I'm going to do this much writing on this day. Nope, doesn't work for me. Because um, yeah. I'm very much the same way, too, of, like, I 
find inspiration and sort of like it hits me out of nowhere. It does when I'm driving. I don't know. Like, is there like oh, a yeah. place where you guys like are at when you like get ideas out of nowhere? Yep. It's like not even, yeah. I do it a lot when I'm driving. Driving like, a lot. Because it's like monotonous and you just, you kind of want, your mind wanders in a way that you mm -hmm. don't because you're focused on driving. But then, especially if I'm alone in the car, like, you know, I, I, I drive a lot. You know, you kind of have to if you work in the film industry. <laughs> yeah. So like, that's a lot of the times too where it's quiet and then you play your music that helps you get to a place too of like getting more creative. And yeah, while well, I'm driving too, which sucks though, because then if you have an idea, you can't like, you know, Note it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, be like, be like, you're trying to drive and like write down your idea. I know, I was like, is that the safest place to do it? <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was the question I was going to ask is like, like, yeah, what, what, what have you found or like, are you discovering in like your process is like your creative process? Like, wh what does that look like? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you want to go first or? You go first. I um, unless you. Can I think a little bit? Yeah, I got some. Well, I, I, what I've learned is like writing with you, like if I'm not feeling inspired, but if we're writing together, that helps me a lot. Cause like, cause sometimes when I'm not feeling inspired, it's hard for me to even get like an initial idea down. But then as soon as like you say something and we're writing together, that helps me kind of just run with it. Yeah. And then, and then that gets my head in the right space of like, oh, that's a good idea. Or, oh, that's a bad idea. And then I can pivot. And then that just helps me kind of flesh out ideas because sometimes I have a hard time starting it, but once I'm going, I can keep going. Yeah. 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 No, and that, uh, collaborative writing is honestly one of the helpful things for, I mean, yeah. for me and you too, because it's like, you know, when you have a conversation, even if you're not writing anything, but you're, talk, you're talking about like a creative topic yeah. and you're, mm -hmm. you're working with, with a group of people, you know, it's, it's, there's like not dead space because if you're by yourself and you run into a wall, you know, you look around. You know, you start thinking about, you know, then you yeah. get stressed out, yeah, like, oh, yeah, what do yeah. I do? I don't even know what to put on this page. But if you're with somebody, you know, it helps because you can bounce ideas off each other. You know, they may have a better idea than you and vice versa. And, and it becomes more collaborative. Um, and then I guess kind of piggyback off of what you're saying. But like, I mean, no distractions. If I do write by myself, like I can't, I have to be, and maybe it's, maybe it's like, um, a procrastination sort of thing because it's like okay well if I'm tired I'm not gonna write you know or mm -hmm. if, if there's somebody else in the house then obviously I can't write you know but like finding the discipline of 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 when you are with yourself or at least for me like playing the right music yeah you know s set a vibe light a candle I mean you know what I mean like yeah, those yeah, little yeah, things yeah. that help you get into the right space you know um and you know it's 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 a it's a learned skill you know and as you do it more often too you just got to do it you know, yeah. you just gotta be like, okay, I'm gonna set this aside a time, or set it aside this time, and and whatever happens, happens, and don't be afraid just to word vomit onto the page. Yeah. You know, get it all out, and then you can always revise. Like that's the beautiful thing about writing is it's like you can always come back to it. You know, just step away for a little bit. You know, like like for Nick, you know, we had 14 drafts of the script before it was finally ready to. Like we felt like it was ready to go, and that's just the process. Yeah. yeah. You know, and everybody has their own process too. Um. Anyways, that's kind of. Anyways. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a great point. And like you said, with just getting it out on the page, because I had, when we first started and you were like, hey, write something, I was like, I struggled with, I wanted it to be perfect. Every word I put on the page, <laughs> I wanted it to sound so good and perfect. <laughs> but then it's like, that's not... It's like, not realistic. Yeah, it's not, not realistic, realistic. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, you can come back. You know, like, if that's a some, you wrote some action that's kind of crappy, it's like, okay, it's okay, come back to it. You can fix it later. Just get on to the next point. Get on to mm. the next point, you yeah. know, and... You know, I don't like to limit, you know, like the workflow, you know, but I'm, I'm a very regimented person, so I mm -hmm. like to do it in phases. So it's like at first, I'll start off with like a little treatment of like mm -hmm. the rough idea of the story, and then mm -hmm. I'll move it over to like a beat sheet, and then maybe to like a scene breakdown. And then finally, it's like, okay, it's ready to go. Maybe I've got notes from people, et cetera. Then it's like, okay, let's tackle the script. Because I used to be like, well, I should just write the script. I have it all in here. Let's yeah. just see where it goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then you start like doing it and then you realize, well, you know, is this even a story? Like, am I hitting these, these, these beats of, of character arcs? And then you kind of get lost and then you get frustrated and you'll write three pages and you'll go, oh my God, this isn't good. And you delete it again. <laughs> yeah. Versus if you really formulate like the rough structure of where you're trying to go, like, you know, the three act traditional structure, at least you have that to fall back on. So if you get lost, you can revert back to it. And you've already done all this work for it. You know what I mean? No, yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I also think sometimes it's, it's, this is something I've learned, of course, in the last like few months, since I really started focusing a lot more on just the writing process, is that I, I'm trying to accept the, the notion that like writing is rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Yes. Yeah. 
because as you said, like we want it, we want something to be like, oh great, this is the perfect thing. It's yeah. never going to change. But I, I think this is also something like as an actor, I've learned too, is that like literally scenes and dialogue and things that are written on the page change up until you're literally in front of the camera. Yes. The crew is there. Like, because, you know, as uh, I think, you know, there's, there's so many minds that come into play once you're ready to shoot a script, mm -hmm. you know? So I think like, you know, as much as we would want to make sure that we have like the best version of it, like sometimes the best version like grows out of just the moment that you're actually filming, whatever it is that you wrote, right? And I think that's like a really like important reminder I have for myself that like, you know, um, especially when I'm writing character, like when I'm doing character work, with yeah. whoever I'm like, you know, how these two, like how a character is maneuvering within a story. It's like, you know, it's, there might be something that an actor brings to a character that works better or sounds better or looks better based on, you know, what kind of life they bring to it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that I've learned has, has benefited the story. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes having to separate that writer part of myself with, yeah. the, with the acting part of myself. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I can't do this. Like, because like, if I do, then I'm kind of limiting the the fun for oh, the yeah. actor too, right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think like, as much as I'm like, oh yeah, I'm on like this many drafts of this story. I'm like, <laughs> it's going to change all the way up until we're all on the day of. Oh, yeah. I mean, it happened a lot too. I mean, even just with like Five Red Face, right? Like, yeah. So many things changed. On the day. On the day Right of. before you're about yeah. to get <laughs> lights are on, you know, the slate's out and people are like, you know, think, little changes happen, you know? Mm -hmm. and, you know, you say it the first time and it changes the next time. They're like, actually, you know, like it's, it, it, and that happened on Nick a lot. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, sometimes it's a hard balance of, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but like you were saying how as a director, like kind of getting your point across still while still letting the actor kind of have their own take on the character, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that, that was challenging. I yeah. Think. You know, like, cause I've, I've worked on, you know, quite a few shows and I've seen different approaches by directors of all, you know, at the highest the top to indie directors who are still learning how to do their thing. And you see all these different approaches and some are very like, follow the fucking script. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. Word for word. And then some will allow you to be more, you know, creative and how like you want to deliver this is kind of your take. And there's a balance to that. And trying to find that balance is kind of hard as a director. Mm -hmm. I would like to, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 yeah. What, at what point is it like, oh my goodness, follow the script or hey, here's an opportunity for you to kind of put your own flavor on it, you know, as an actor. Yeah. And because you've done both, like, do, is there anything that you like you would want to speak to that? Yeah, I think so, you know, working with different directors over the, the course of my, my acting stuff, um, I feel like, yeah, most, most times, majority of them, like they give you the option. Well, they don't give you the option. They have, they usually have you do the scene the way it's written, mm -hmm. like down to like the T and then depending on your director, sometimes, you know, I've had directors be like, okay, cool. We've got a take of like what it's written as. Um, and then, I think this is the part where I, I, I like, I have fun with it. Yeah. So just like, okay, now we're still gonna, we're gonna do it again, but I want you to say this the way that you feel like mm -hmm. you would say it as this person, right? And that happened a lot when I was doing Accused, um, mm -hmm. Matazba. Um, there were certain things that were written in English, um, but you know, being Navajo and it being a Navajo story, you know, she utilized that skill that I have of being able to like translate things on my own and be able to like change something from English into Navajo um, to make it mean more. Cause you know, cause sometimes when it's said in a different language, it kind of hits. Lose, yeah, yeah it hits you also <laughs> lose translation. Like there aren't yeah. direct translations for like Yeah, but you things. know, but you know, there's ways that you can say the same thing, but it hits more because it yeah. means so much more in the language than it does in English, right? And mm -hmm. so I did a lot of that on that on that series where like, you know, we, we do it in English. We, you know, do the thing as it's written. And then, you know, she would be like, can you see, can you do that in Navajo? Can you like use a word? And that happens to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> when they find that I speak Navajo, they're yeah. like, can you do that in Navajo? <laughs> and I'm like, sure. sure. I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. I guess. Uh, pay me translation work, please. Nice. I'm gonna put that in, I actually am going to put that in my contract and move on. Because oh, yeah. I've done it so often, um, especially with Navajo projects. I'm always being asked. Um, to translate things because, you know, because they want that to come off as authentic and real and, you know, who better than someone who speaks it, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, so that was, uh, so that was like an, an approach that like, 
you know, was really great because like it allowed me to give what was given to me and what was being asked of me in the scene um, by the writer and the director. But also like when you're given that chance to play and sort of like let whatever comes to you in that moment happen, mm -hmm. um, there's also like a really beautiful spontaneity that comes with that too. Um, of course, it can either happen either like it's great or it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> That's the beauty about film is you can always do more than you can, whatever yeah, takes you yeah, need. That's where you, get that, that's where you get that one take. That's like the initial, that's like, true. this is what, this is the vision. Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also I think it's like, um, because you, you acted in Nick, yeah, right? Like, yeah. so like the bit. one thing I really, yeah, I was like, the one thing I really appreciate about like, cause you know, you have actors, you know, right. the actors that like study acting and stuff. Right. Um, but I have, I'm always really fascinated by the, the sort of approach of, um, you know, actors who are not quote unquote trained or like mm -hmm. not an actor, you know, like you always hear that word, like non actors, yeah. right? <laughs> but I always find it super interesting when you're approaching your process, when you don't have like, you know, all those like methods and yeah. technique and oh, stuff yeah. that you're like, you know, as for someone like me who went to school in theater and like learned all these things, like Stanislavka, y'all check off and all this stuff. Um, what do you think, like, as someone who didn't study acting, um, w how did you find that process for yourself? Um, it was, it was scary, definitely. Cause I, I felt, you know, sort of like, cause we put a lot of work into the project and making it happen. And I was like, well, I don't want to be the big doofus on camera that messes it up, you know? But also a struggle was acting naturally. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, like, how do you act like you're not acting you know and <laughs> <laughs> like that is the best way to describe yeah. acting <laughs> and that was that was tough because i was like like i know i know how i would say these lines but in a normal conversation but it's like oh well you know how is my arm how is my body you know mm -hmm. and i don't have those like i don't even know what the practices would look like of the fundamentals of acting so mm -hmm. but but at the same time it was fun because i felt like I could do whatever I wanted. Mm. And you know, especially as being a minor character in that story, it's like, oh, I can kind of be whatever, do whatever I want here. And yeah, it, it's, there, it, was, it was challenging only because I was nervous to mess it up. And I think that's because I didn't have those fundamentals like you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. How for you for? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there was, a, I was in it for three seconds. Uh, <laughs> I put a piece of gum underneath the park bench yeah. and this just a little insert. So, but I don't like being in front of cameras. I've never been that way. Um, but in terms of like directing, I mean, you know, I had, you know, worked in the film industry for three years and I learned all the did different types of shows, documentary work, narrative feature, indies, big studio productions. So like I soaked all that knowledge in. So when I, went to direct like to direct that short film i had i thought i had this idea of like how it's really done but i realized that when you're actually directing there's a lot of decisions that i never even had to make or were aware of mm. prior to working as like a you know pa or art director or editorial on different shows that i worked on so like you know one of the th things that i realized on the day was like you know camera placement you know and it's funny because you're you're a pa and you see these <laughs> and you sometimes you'll question like you know, I, I worked on a, a, a series that's in development right now. It's a Netflix series and, and Peter Berg's directing it. And there were times where I would like find myself questioning like, oh, why is he doing that? You know, what, <laughs> what, what, what's, why is the choice to do th this way? And I'd criticize it. Because, but then I realized once I was on Nick, like I never had to make those decisions. Mm. So, you know, like on the day, like the very first day of shooting, you know, thankfully we had Giannis who I had a relationship with and he's a super cool DP, very egoless. Um, having him as like a, you know, someone to guide that. Yeah. And I mentioned that on a previous podcast, but, um, you know, not knowing where, how to shoot out a scene. I mean, like that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a thing that, you know, you think you have an idea about or, and then you get there and you're like, my, you know, there were a couple of times where my, my mind went blank as people were asking me questions of like, you know, what to do, <laughs> like what, what's yeah. going on here. Yeah. And because I was so green, I hadn't gone through those processes. And now looking back at it, like, even though it's only one show, there's already a, a comfortability that I have now that I didn't have before. And mm -hmm. so I, I know that's a little bit different than kind of what like your experience was with the yeah. acting stuff, but as a director, like, you know, you just gotta, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know really what else. Yeah, no, and it's, it's you know, you get it over time. Yeah. Um, 
and and I, I feel the same way about you know being in front of camera. It, it's I'm a performer to my friends and you know to people I don't know if it, but as soon as like you know you have big lights on you and, like, <laughs> and everybody's paying yeah. attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the red dot on the camera flicks on and you're all oh it's happening now. And, <laughs> And we have 20 minutes before we have to be to the next shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. As you were saying. Yeah, no, I think, uh, like, I'm always curious um, when it, when you can think of, like, a what scene or, like, moment either in a film or even just, like, not even film, like, either a show or, like, a play, performance, or, like, anything that just, like, encapsulates a story. Like, what is one that comes to mind or, like, what are a few things that you always try to, like, not necessarily aim to do the same, but like inspired you to like create whatever it is that you're creating. Mm. That's that. I don't know if this is exactly what you're asking, but you said that, and I thought about we were just talking about camera placements for this podcast in the break mm -hmm. there, and I thought about movies that I kind of like their camera placement on, um, and like I thought it made me like think about it as more of a storytelling device and like a way to get your point across in the story. And it's a it's a silly movie and it's very ridiculous, but it's don't look up, and uh, yeah. <laughs> just to, the, the way that they like use like the camera to show sort of like the, they'll they'll have the camera and it'll be like just of the back of their heads while they're like having an argument in public, and it makes you feel like you're a person there watching them have that argument, which is kind of the point of the story in some ways of like you know it's these these people how these people are being perceived by the greater public and like their ideas. And I just thought that was like very interesting. And when I'm thinking about that, when I think about my own ideas, I'm like, oh, how can I like, you know, use the camera to better tell a story? Yeah. Cause that's, you know, that's- It's a part of the language. The medium, yeah. You know, it's, it's, there's like, there's so many languages in the film that are so cool. There's like camera language. There's your score language, there's your writing language, then there's your performance language, and they mm -hmm. all kind of, even like set design language. Even editing. Even editing no, is yeah. design language oh, too. Oh, I love editing so much. <laughs> um, it's fun. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's the movie you write, the movie you shoot, the movie you edit. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so um, I think in terms of answer your question, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I, I grew up like in rural New Mexico and I grew up like along the Bosque, and so I have, and I work outside a lot, you know, like farm boy or whatever. Um, and so whenever I see movies like, like one of my favorite parts about The Last of Us was mm -hmm. they take these segments of the, just to shoot the nature element, the natural elements mm -hmm. of the spaces they're in. And <clears throat> another example is like, you know, in the intro of like The Revenant where they're, where they're hunting the elk and they just do inserts of, of the pine rustling, you know, and the sounds of the creek. Like I'm, I'm very interested, like I think my type of style maybe is very nature oriented and capturing those elements and story because then they allow you, you know, like a lot of movies kind of skip that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I'm attracted to that. I like that. And then also it gives, in my mind, it gives you a better sense of like the space that these characters live in. You know, it's not just them doing their things existing in this world, but then you connect them to the world too, you know, in a way that yeah. I think so. I look for stuff like that in movies, yeah, that's you know, cool. that's. Yeah. It's like almost as, as also looking at the, the land and the environment as a character exactly. as well. Which I think is really, yeah, I think important when, even if just like even the environment is inside a house. Yeah, you know, yeah for sure. Whatever, yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting viewpoint to have for sure in whatever story you're telling. Um, for me, it's like, I always revert back to this one because I feel like it was the first time I like felt like, oh, like I want to write something like that or I want to create something like that is um, the French film Amélie. I haven't seen it. <laughs> you haven't, haven't seen, seen it? it? Oh, oh my God. Okay. Seen. You should. Okay. <laughs> well, but, well, because it's like, it's very, it's very quirky. It's very much like the, the choices of, uh, I think also because I love editing and I see things a lot as an editor, like, like how many like things that you can like spice together mm -hmm. to like, you know, just the tempo and the flow of the scene and the yeah. story itself is so like you can manipulate it in whatever way you want mm -hmm. with editing. And so the way it's edited and just like some of the, the, the coloring and the, and the texture of like the, the scenes is very much like, it's very like just, um, yeah, I think quirky is the word for it. Cause yeah. like, you know, it just, it's, there's like so many weirdos in that film <laughs> that it just like, you know, it was like, oh yeah, like even like weirdos and outcasts deserve to be like in love and deserve to like be loved, you know? So For that sure. was like something that I like remember when I first watched it, I was like, I really like the feel of this and the aesthetic of it. And so I think that's, you know, 
again, just because like I was someone who was so different in like my personality growing up, like where I'm from, you know, everybody's like super quiet and like kind of just like chill, whatever, like just there mm -hmm. going with the flow. And I'm like this like firecracker of an individual, you know, even as a kid, I was like, -da -da -da! <laughs> and I was like, I always felt really out of place. I always felt like, man, like I don't feel like I fit in or I don't feel like I belong. Um, and so I felt like that, that's the film that I'm like, always just like, I want to encapsulate that quirky sort of like, I don't know. Like, that's just like the word that I feel like. Yeah. There's some other yeah. words there just not coming to mind. <laughs> well, like, like idiosyncratic parts of people, you know, mm -hmm. like that, that's, that's what's, I mean, that's what Nick was, is, is you know, in a lot of, um, you know, the quirks of just human expression, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because it's unique. Everybody has their unique little things and like highlighting those in story is how you, you develop more full flesh characters and that are more authentic to who they are as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. And then when you're, and when you're writing that, if you just like put little elements of that in there, I feel like it lets actors kind of latch onto that mm -hmm. and then, you know, put their own interpretation of what that is to get, because I haven't seen that film either, but I imagine if it's full of, you know, weird quirky people, it's probably, those actors probably do some pretty weird, fun things. That, <laughs> and, and a lot of that stuff is probably not exactly in the script, but you know, you can write that to get that out of those people. For mm -hmm. sure, which for is sure. really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the things I did want to know was how Natalie is one of the most badass dancers I've ever seen. <laughs> And like, and, and, and so many different, I don't it's want to say di disciplines isn't the right word. Uh, not genres, uh, like styles, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. styles of dance. Um, do you want to talk about like how yeah. badass you are? <laughs> I, mean, I thought that was a given. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, the thing I love about like being able to bring together different things that you enjoy, you mm -hmm. know, like I obviously knew that I was going to definitely, you know, involve dance and movement in film. Um, making just because that's just who I am, mm -hmm. right? And like, I also think that's also why, like, as a director, I love to see the camera move. Mm. Um, I'm at, when we're talking about cameras and like where to place them and like how to like when you set up a scene, like, I I don't like when cameras just stay stationary. Sorry. I like when it's either motivated by the feeling of the scene or like a, the words or like the characters' movements or like the actors' movements. I. Um, and I think that's just mostly because like I have to, <laughs> I need to see things move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it has to move. Um, but yeah, no, I mean like I, I grew up being a soft out dancer for many years because you know, growing up on the res, <laughs> it's like no dance studios at all, right? Yeah. Like there's just like no way to like foster that, that passion. And so, because I just really loved it and I wanted to do it, I taught myself. I used to watch like Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Paul Abdul. Um, used to watch a ton of dance films like, like breaking and like all these like classic dance films that came out in the eighties and nineties. And so I just would teach myself a lot. And so, um, and then I started learning from friends who like to dance too. And so I started like learning a lot from other people. And then I didn't actually start training until I went to college. That's when I started doing more stuff with like ballet and modern and jazz. And, um, and you know, as much as I really loved like learning different styles, I felt like, you know, again, like, because I don't quite necessarily like to just stick myself in one, I kind of start combining a lot of the styles, like depending on like the story I want to tell. And because yeah. like, mm. and because like I knew that I wasn't going to be like, you know, a prima ballerina or I wasn't going to be like, you know, this like, you know, prolific dancer in the, you know, these styles that are so revered, like ballet and all this stuff. I was like, you know what, if I want to see something that I feel like would be cool to, to watch, then I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Um, that's so that's where like, you know, stepping more into that choreography role came into play. Um, and just like being able to showcase that there is a technique and skill to styles that are not Eurocentric based, mm -hmm. um, that there, t that there, t there needs, there's also discipline and fundamental work that goes into those styles as well. And mm -hmm. so I'm, um, a huge stickler when it comes to like learning the foundation of like dance because yeah. like dance in itself is rooted in so many things, you know, and I think sometimes people don't quite understand the history and the cultural context that comes with dance. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I do a lot of that education too when I'm, when I'm doing stuff with, with dancers and, you know, com dance companies or whoever is like wanting to work with me. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, 
Again, if I'm talking about like a dream thing one day is like I would love to choreograph for an artist one day yeah. and like not just um I'm I'm a fan of Paris Grobel. She okay. like does the choreography for Rihanna and oh, like did yeah. the Super Bowl wow. and all that stuff. Like she's I've known about her for years. Like before she, like everybody was like, ah, da, 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 like dance, 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 right? Like all of those people that are like known for dance right now, I've known ever since I was like a teenager. Right. Yeah. And so because they've been doing this work for so many years, it's just now a popular thing. Right. Right. And so I really admired like their sort of like approach to their movement style because it's so different. It's gritty, but yet it's like feminine, but it's sexy, but it's also like hard, you know, and like tough. And I, I think like I would love to like be able to showcase my ideas and philosophy of movement and dance, um, not in the same way, but in the same sense that like, you know, hopefully I'll get to work with an artist like Rihanna. That'd be sick. Somebody. Uh, that'd be, that'd be super <laughs> safe. Yeah. And like, yeah, or like, you know, um, you know, creative direct a tour or something, yeah, you know, like, sure. uh, yeah, I think that would, that would definitely be on my if, list of like dream if jobs. If there was one artist right now that you'd want to do that for, who would it be? Oh, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Most artists nowadays are not performers. Right. I cool. think there's a difference between being able to perform and not being a perform, being able to do that. Because, like, I think that's a skill set that is just not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, so I feel like, you know, I'm trying to think of, like, yeah, who, do I, no. who do I even, like, envision being able to, like, to do, do the stuff that I want to yeah. do? Yeah, Because there's musicians, there's, and then there's musicians who can perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's you know, a difference, you know? Michael like, Jackson, like, that's part of the reason why he's Michael Jackson. Is yeah. Because not only is he super talented <laughs> on a musical level, but, like, I mean, the dude's one of the greatest performing dancers, like, I could think of, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just, it's a rare thing to find. Yeah, and so I think, like, yeah, there's not a lot of well-rounded performers when it comes to, like, musicians and artists nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, um, it's just not something that's a thing anymore. Because yeah. it's, we're just in a different time yeah. of, like, musicality and, and artistry when it comes to, like, live performances. I mean, I mean, I would love, of course, to work with Rihanna, but I also feel like, I, I'm not quite the right fit for someone like like Rihanna, mm -hmm. um, so I feel like I'm trying to think like, oh, who do I like right now that I would love to like? Who would really kind of like be in line with how I would want to approach it? Mm. Are there any performers that like they're not really you know they just kind of go on stage and sing, but you'd want to do like the choreography around them or anything like? Uh, are you into like that <sighs> kind of bigger? Like multiple yeah, people. Yeah, multiple people. And like, again, I, 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 I want people to move, you know? Yeah. And so like, it's, it's most times people are not like that right now. They're just like, let, let the other people do the work for yeah. me. Right. And so, I mean, I mean, Beyonce obviously is great at that too. Like she's very much like a performer, mm -hmm. you know? For sure. um, but again, not necessarily like, I feel like I, I couldn't quite the way I do my work with choreography is very different mm -hmm. and it's just a different like method that I would need someone who is willing to kind of step away from this again this idea of dance being like just moves and technique it's like no dance is actually spirit moving whether we are literally moving our bodies or staying still mm -hmm. you know so I, that's a that's a concept that some people just can't quite get well and there's a story you can tell through movement rather than just like moving you know what yeah, I mean yeah 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 um oh I know one um Halsey Halsey, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was like, I was like, someone is there. I know I'm, I'm there's someone that <laughs> I know that there. I could, yeah. Halsey, yeah, no, because, I mean, th they've done some stuff where, like, it's more, like, intention-based movement mm -hmm. in terms of some of the performances that she's done. Um, but, yeah, I would love to, like, you know, creative direct an artist's whole entire tour yeah down to like the visuals and like down to like oh, how that whole thing works yeah i mean that's like one of the things i want to do like in the next year is like i i do want to live like curate a live performance um i like have like sort of like the blueprint of it um but i want it to be a production like i i love like there's a lot of native fashion shows happening right now mm -hmm. but like i am not interested in just like the one runway the walk or people the walk yes <laughs> i like want i want dancers to move in and out of like the space like i don't just want like a, a runway i want there to be a circular space and then like vessels of lanes of of of, of avenues of dancers to maneuver through and mm. like models can maneuver through and like i like want it to be a whole like production like production yeah, yeah. yeah. and Excellent. so 
Um, so that's something I really want to, to tackle within the next year or two, yeah. um, to make that a thing. Make that to be like, let's take it to the next level guys. Damn like, up. come on. <laughs> 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 like, I know how to get there. Let's, let's and then do you it. Can you, shoot know it too. you know, you can yeah, shoot it in no, a way that, yeah. that you, you haven't really seen before, you know? Yeah. It's oh, very yeah. much like, you know, how, like, you know how Rihanna does the, the Fenty lingerie shows, mm -hmm. like very much like that, but obviously not like lingerie. Cause yeah. that's not like what I'm about but like i mean you never know <laughs> you know is there like a native lingerie line that might come out who knows yeah. but like very much like that where it's like it's fashion but there's also like you know music and and movement that tells the story of the line and like what yeah. the message yeah. of the the oh, designer yeah. wants right and i feel like that's really what i want is i really want to find a designer who is willing to go that that way with me and not like just be like okay well i just want to create the the clothing and just have and people walk with it yeah. yeah i'm like no like I, I want to like work with the designer to you know create the looks for everybody not just the models but the dancers and have some live musicians and perform. the lighting yeah and, and the that. lighting and the visuals yeah. like i like want to involve film in it too like so um again just another thing <laughs> on my list of like one day one, one day, day. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um I think we could probably wrap this up pretty soon. Is there any th last things that you'd like to discuss or anything mm. you want our audience to know? I don't know. Just no. no? no I feel good. like we've talked so much about so many different things. Yeah, no, so it was like, fun. This was a great yeah. conversation. <laughs> this was, yeah, this was, this was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, once again, thank you, Natalie, yeah, thank for taking you. the time to be on this for us. <laughs> um, yeah, we got more stuff coming. You're you gonna know. finish the outro. You no, you got this. Okay, well, <laughs> then that concludes the Chili Line Media Podcast with Mikhail and Natalie. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we had a blast. Um, we have stuff you guys can check out. Uh, you know, check out our YouTube for our shorts and sketches coming out. Check out Instagram for reels and you know some more behind the scenes content type stuff. And check out Natalie. You know, that's what we're here You'll for. You'll see so. my face soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks again, and uh, that's a wrap.